Julie, thank you so much. Well, increasing your sugar intake may have a bad effect on your health. We told you about this new research yesterday that found just a 25% increase in sugar made female mice more likely to die and male mice were less likely to reproduce. So, would an increase in sugar have the same effect on humans? Should we be worried? Joining us now to talk about these uh, latest findings is Dr. Mayo Friedlis with the National Spine and Pain Centers, also voted among Washington in magazine's top doctors and pain management. We're happy you're here with us. Thank you. It's nice to be here, Allison. So when I first heard of this story, yes, it had different components, but I thought, hey, what's new? Don't we already know this? We've, we've heard sugar is bad. Really, all of that, the, the white food is bad, the flour is bad, the sugar is bad. So what's new about this study? Well, this study was interesting because it used the same amount of sugar that Americans currently consume on a regular basis. Okay. It's just three cans of soda a day. Now, you think, well, okay, I, don't, I only drink two cans of soda. But it's also about all the added sugar in our foods. You know, a simple granola bar, which we think is healthy, has 20 grams of sugar in it mm. out of 26 grams of carbohydrates. So it's the added sugar to our foods that also has to be counted in there. Okay. So the importance of this study is that it's, it's the same amount of sugar we're currently eating, and it was toxic to mice. Have we, have we and I want to talk about the mice. We've been talking a lot about mice research lately, <laughs> but um, the, the negative effects, when we talk about the re reproductive effects in men, have we heard that before? We have not heard that. Okay. And, and it's important to understand these are mice. Okay. And part of the reproductive effects were having to do with territories that the mice control as male mice. Mm -hmm. We're not really in that milieu as, as humans. So I don't know that a lot of the study is, is transferable to humans, but the important thing is on what humans take a day in sugar, there was toxicity. You know, in our practice where we deal with pain, we see the ravages of, the downstream ravages of too much sugar. People, mm -hmm. there is more obesity, two out of three Americans are obese, mm -hmm. and or overweight, I should say. And that has its toll on the joints of their bodies. They develop premature arthritis. The inflammation affects their joints, and also their cardiovascular system, their hormonal balances. So that's what we see. We actually see that we, if we can pull people off sugar, their pain immediately drops by about 30%. That's fascinating. It is. Yes. And they heal better. We're using a lot of stem cells to heal joints at National Spine and Pain at the Stem Cell Arts. Mm -hmm. and those stem cells thrive better if we can pull the people off of their sugar content. Sugar. And just the main difference between mice and humans is perhaps their ability to do whatever they need to do to, to attract a mate. Is that what we're saying basically? For the males. For the males. For the males, they were not as competitive about okay. attracting the females. Okay. For the females, they base it messed with their metabolism because they died at twi twice sure. the rate okay. as the mice who weren't fed sugar. So. Okay something very toxic going on, particularly in the women. So. In the, in the, 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 the female mice. The little mice, um, <laughs> the mice ladies. The American Heart Association says, Tony, don't laugh at me. American Heart Association says that basically you should limit it to um, no more than 100 calories of sugar. That's six tablespoons for women, nine tablespoons for men. Now that's added sugar, right? Now does that include, you were saying the granola bar or, or that occasional cookie. Is that what we're talking about? That includes it, and, and forgive me, but it's, it's actually teaspoon, not teaspoon. Tablespoon, okay. So it's, it's a it's lot less. It's even smaller, okay. You know that 124-year-old guy you reported on yes, earlier? Yes, uh-huh. No sugar. No sugar. Well, <laughs> no sugar. So how do we how do we bring this into our own life? Because, you know, Dr. Freelis, it's hard to not have any sugar. Listen, sugar, you know, it's not it's not great for us. But let's be honest, and let's let's we all have we all live and we all like something sweet. Okay. And it's all about moderation. It's about you know maybe if you're used to having a couple cans of soda a day, maybe replace one with a fruit, mm -hmm. and you eat the whole fruit. And you know if you're going to consume a little more, maybe you exercise a little more that day. You know, all sugar isn't bad. You just have to moderate it. We, in fact, use sugar in our practice. We inject sugar to actually help heal the joints. Mm. If you inject the ligaments with a special kind of sugar, dextrose, which was one of the sugars they used in this study, we actually find that it makes the ligaments heal, and that's, uh, that's a healthy use of sugar. Okay. But 
by and large, we have to be very moderating with our use of sugar. Let's do that. Did, did, did it look at high fructose corn syrup? There's a lot of talk about that being an artificial sugar and how that affects the body. Did this study address Exa that as well? They, exactly. They used a combination of fructose and dextrose. Okay. And the fructose is the high fructose component, so they tried to mimic the amount of high fructose in our diets. Right. So high fructose corn sugar is, is probably more dangerous than other kinds of sugar. So we should try and stay away from that one. Wow, it's been an eye-opening interview, and I appreciate it. I'm really going to have to look at the labels and some of the things that I'm eating, too. So, Dr. Friedlis, thank you so much. Well, it's nice of you to have me. Appreciate it. We'll be right back.